We're going to look at Romans chapter 8, and then we're also going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to give you verses of promise that will help you. Now, especially since the COVID cases and the elections, a lot of people are getting troubled. I, and not only that, people in Bible-believing churches are getting trials and sufferings and the devil's attacking. I want to give you some of my favorite verses, and it might be cliche, but sometimes it need, we need it to be reminded again. Amen. So sometimes a fresh reminder can always keep us looking up. So remember, when you're going through suffering, all you can do is hold on to the promises of God. Remember that. All right, so the promises of God. Let's start off with Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. So during my suffering, here are the following promises of God that has helped me to keep looking up. So the first promise of God is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So what does that mean? That means that no matter what kind of thing that you go through in life, that God has to work it for good. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So he has to work it for good. So think about this, is that if those things did not happen to you in your life, then God would not be able to work to give you those good things. Now, let me make it more plain and more simple. Do you want good things from God, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, that's simply honest, right? If God wants to give you that particular blessing and good thing, however, that bad thing has to be done first. And when that bad thing can be done first, then he can give you that good thing that you're seeking for. A person uh, who wants to get his uh, uh, bachelor's degree cannot do it unless he has to go through these specific bad things and struggles first. Right. A person who wants to be good at a construction work business cannot become that way unless he goes through these struggles and bad things first. A person who wants to be healthy, even physically healthy, this is a biological fact. To be physically healthy, physically fit, that person has to go through struggles and a lot of endurance and even bad things and hindrances to overcome first. Then you can get the good things. Another thing about all things work together for good is that uh, that literally means all things. That literally means all things. So not some, that means all. Even including the bad things you've done, your sins. God may not want that in your life, obviously, but God is so merciful that he's not just going to uh, use the bad things that he's putting you under to turn into good. He's also going to put the bad things that you created yourself with your sinful problem and temptations and work it for good. That's a blessing from the Lord. Isn't it a blessing? So he's going to do that. Why? Because you're his child to them who are the called according to his purpose. You're his child, man. So God's going to work it for good. Whether you're a messed up person, the Lord's going to work it for good one way or another. He gets the glory from the devil. Didn't you know that? Didn't you know he'll get glory from the devil? You might say, how so? With his antichrist kingdom, hell on earth, it fulfills the glory of his scripture and the glory of his needed kingdom, proving to mankind you're wicked without Jesus Christ. Now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Another one of my favorite verses that I keep looking up. To get the power from the Holy Spirit, it must be done through weaknesses. It is... It is done through pain. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, a lot of people, they might see the touch of God in my life in preaching and teaching. And I'm not saying to brag because I know there's a lot of people out there who have it better than I do. All right. But if, if you see any of that in me, what I want to do is this. I don't want to immediately put credit on myself. So if there's anything that I boast about my accomplishments, I'm not going to put it on me. I'm going to immediately switch it to God. Amen. You know why? That kind of touch of God through teaching and preaching 
did not come without great cost. So remember this, before you want to be a Dr. David Peacock, just know this, there had to be a great cost for that. Before you want to be a Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, you got to realize that there was a great cost to it where he had to put a gun over his head, face, and want to commit suicide. Before you want to become a, a Holy Spirit-filled preacher that would drag down thousands on the altar like those Great Awakening Revival preachers did, I think you better recall that Billy Sunday's son went through a tragic accident. Better recall that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So notice over here that to have the reason why you go through these tough times is so that you can gain more power from God. If you deny that, then recall the past year of the hardships that you went through ever since you joined this church. Isn't that a weird thing? Ever since you joined a Bible-believing church and this church, all of a sudden bad things start happening to you. Actually, um, that was one of the reasons why I kept myself lonely and distant and thought myself to be bound and doomed to be alone and restricted because anyone that I got close to, they seemed to be get poison, catch poison for some weird reason. So I just felt bad about that and tried to distant. But uh, it's inevitable, you know. So then people who get inv more involved helping me in the ministry, what happens? All of a sudden something bad happens. And I just hate that. It makes me feel bad. However, the thing is this, is that if you recall back from your past year, the more you got involved in God's work, and in this church, you changed a lot, haven't you? Amen. You've seen so much spiritual improvement, have you? That's the power of God. Yeah. And that is done when you go through all those hardships. Right. So that's why you rather glory in your infirmities. Yeah. So then if you had a choice with God's power, where, God, where you can please the Lord, where you can be, do great things for Him through discomfort, or life is comfortable and then you don't have the power of God, exactly. but rather the power of the flesh filled up, the world and the devil, what would you choose? See, faced with those options, you take God's grace that he gives to you and press on. And that's the promise I can cling on to. The great promise that he gives is not just power, but also grace. So grace is something that he gives to you where you you have enough grace to pull through. That's the idea. God gives you somehow enough grace where you, you can pull through, you can breathe through another no night. After the tears that you shed, for some weird reason, you can smile the next day. The sorrow that you spilled on the altar, you somehow get back to work again for the Lord. Where you feel distraught and you just want to be left alone. For some weird reason, you just come to church and sing hymns and glorify Him, thanking Him despite of the bad things that you go through. Why? Because that's the grace that He gives to you. Because if you really believe you don't have the grace to pull through, then for some strange reason, you're still alive. You're still here. And not only that, uh, God somehow kept providing your needs. You're not dead. You're not broken. I mean, that's God's grace pulling you through. Amen. If you have evidence of God's grace not pulling you through, then you, got, you better bring me evidence of that because all I see evidence right now, friend, no matter how bad and broken you are right now, I don't care who you are in this room, all I'm seeing is the grace of God right now with you here. I don't see broken people, shattered, defeat, and hurt. And trial, I see the grace of God here. Amen, brother. Now, I, of course, people are going through broken and hurtful situations, so don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to point out the fact is that, you know, rather than being that type of person, I'm seeing his grace just making you grit through it. The sorrow, the shatter, the defeat, and the hurt. I see that. 
Now let's look at the book of Acts. The book of Acts. And what you need is a healthy dose of happy thoughts. Look at Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Another promise that I can cling on to during these times that has helped me was at verse 2, Acts chapter 26, verse 2. And the Bible says over here, I think myself, what? Happy, Happy King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. So Paul, uh, if you... Uh, know the story, he's in prison out of his ministry for over a year and he's unable to continue his church. A lot of pastors complaining about, you know, what the government's doing with the COVID restriction. They can't grow their ministry. Imagine you're Paul. Instead of complaining, what has he done? He rejoiced in the Lord. I think myself happy. So the thing is this, is that what has helped me cling on cling on to life and to keep going on is to think myself happy. Why? What's the happy thought Paul is thinking? Not that I'm in chains, that I can speak to you about the gospel. Yeah. Now look, um, your mind is so occupied on the one or two or five bad things. On, but when you start to count all the happy things in life, it easily, easily outweighs all the bad things. I mean, uh, you're going to heaven. Yeah. Amen. Woo! You're not going to burn in hell. Yeah. I'm not going to hell. Yeah. You're eternally secure. Right. Think about a lot of the Bible-believing brethren who don't have Bible-believing churches like you do. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Think about people who uh, love you and pray for you. And for onlineers who don't have a Bible-believing church to go to, Thank God that you're not those people from the 1700s or 1800s who don't have the online stuff so they don't have access to Bible-believing truth. Right. Man, at least you got something like that to keep you growing and going. Thank God YouTube, Facebook, Twitter didn't shut us down, onliners. Yeah. God, uh, God could have allowed the devil to shut us down a long time ago. There's so much to be thankful for. Yeah. You got food, you got clothes. Uh, a great way to make yourself happy is think about the good things you got that other people don't have, not even rich people. When you do that, then you realize, man, I'm very blessed. Yes, yes. I'm actually the lucky guy who won the lottery. Yeah. Yeah, now think happy thoughts. When you uh, stand upon the promises of God, like we sing, right? Standing on the promises of God. When you think about the promises, you're able to stand against that wicked one who tries to ruin your life. Now go to the book of uh, Philippians, please. I'm going to look at the book of Philippians. We're going to look at the book of Philippians, chapter 4, please. Chapter 4. And then we're going to read verse 6 through 7. Verse 6 through 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Now, another method is verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So notice right here that your heart and mind is able to be sane, still in the Lord, intact, not broken down, when you what? Be careful for nothing. And you just leave it to the Lord in prayer. So the simple answer is this, is that stop, uh, don't, stop being careful. I'm not saying, I mean, God says there's a level of caution that you should take. But a lot of times, when you try to be careful, like, Okay, how am I going to take care of my finances? Oh, uh, how am I going to take care of my church? Oh man, COVID restrictions are rising up again. And oh man, how are we going to do the revival meeting? Oh man, how are we going to uh, take fellowship with the brethren? How am I going to sing to the Lord? And how am I going to do all that? When you do that, see, uh, trying to be careful and do all these things, what happens? You can't help but worry. 
Can't help but fear. You can't help be sad. Sometimes the Lord, he just wants you where... Now, don't get me wrong. You got to do everything the best that you could. But look, man, when you do the best that you could, you got to give it up after that. A lot of you don't let it go. You just want to keep on planning and thinking and worrying and being careful, careful, careful. Look, I'm not saying being stupid, but when's the last time you let go? So after you've done what you could, just let it go and leave it to the Lord. All right? You don't need to do more. All right? You don't need to do more. You got to let it go through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Look, uh, bills are going low and your family's in a crisis. What can you do but just leave it to the Lord in prayer? Yeah. That's what you can do. One thing I've learned in life also is this. One thing I've also learned is without these promises and when he does so much more, there are so many promises that he's given me that I've got to be thankful for. That God cannot lie. Do you realize that? Yep. If God cannot lie, then these promises is exactly what I mean. It's a promise. So he, these have to come to pass. Stop being careful and then what happens? God gives you his peace. When you pray, he'll give you peace about it. Yeah. And then you go, God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. If we were to think of the worst case scenario, think about it, worst case scenario, all right? Your dr most dreadful fear happens, all right? Uh, you think that you'll do better uh, being that way without God's promises? Or would you prefer going through the worst situation with God's promises? See, it, see, no matter what, even if the worst situation does happen, you're still better with God's promises than without. Why? Because in the worst situation, what can he do? He has to keep his promises to you. And he has to uh, keep lifting you up whenever you're down. What a great God we serve. Yeah. So before you get bitter and mad at God, the problem is this. Well, then you can be bitter and mad, but then uh, it won't change the fact you're still going through the worst situation. It won't change that fact. It's always better through his promises.